What kind of guard are you? What kind of guard? I'm not arguing with you. I'm not arguing with you. They are not terrorists, they are just freedom fighters and they are good and they are defending their lands. But when we look at Palestine, then we have that label of, oh, they are terrorists, they are not freedom fighters anymore. And that's what I don't like. So, hey Alexa for Rebel News and I'm currently in Montreal at Concordia University because today we saw circulating online some videos showing some attack between two groups of students, the pro-Palestinian and the pro israeli I'll let you watch some video. <laughs> Police, sir, sir, I have about five videos of him getting aggressive. The one, can I tell you? Yes! Get him out! So we came all the way down here because we wanted to find some of the student that was present during the event. And we wanted to have their opinion and also we wanted them to explain what did happen. This follows my report from yesterday about the rise of anti-Semitism in Montreal, but we can also observe this phenomenon in other provinces and countries. Overnight, a synagogue fell victim to a firebombing by a Molotov cocktail, and today, Jewish students were attacked by pro-Palestinian individuals while they were honoring the plus 230 hostages taken by Hamas. Clearly, in the image shown on social media, intolerance and violence were highly demonstrated. In the pro-Palestine crowd, some people on social media have identified Yassin Harab. In one of the videos, we can see him yelling at his opponent. Go back to Poland, Sharmuta. Sharmuta is the Arabic word for whore. We did contact the school to receive a statement from them if they are condemning the action of their employees and to inquire if an investigation will follow. Anti-Semitism is indeed rising rapidly since the beginning of the conflicts between Israel and Hamas on October 7. According to TVA, during the incident at Concordia University, a 22-year-old student was arrested by the SPVM for committing act of assault against a security guard. Videos available online show pro-Palestinian attacking Israeli flags and property of their opponent. However, the question remains, as seen previously with a teenager who was facing criminal charges for pulling down a LGBTQ flag, will those involved in these anti-Semitic acts 
face similar charges like incitement of hatred? We have found a student from the pro-Palestine side and a student from the pro-Israel side, and both are providing us with their perspective on the story. Yeah, so there's a group called Startup Nation, a new group, Israel-focused group, student group um, at, here at Concordia, and they were tabling yesterday to raise awareness of the over 230 hostages kidnapped by the terrorist group Hamas in their attack on Israel a month ago. Just to raise awareness, it's an incredibly important issue. We're praying, we're hoping everything that we can do to bring them back, and we need to make sure that everyone, as many people as possible, including right here at Concordia, know about it. Unfortunately, it was interrupted by many people. Some sort of other tabling um, next to it, there was a, a kafia sale, I believe, and it was attracting many people. Um, and then many more people started to gather, and unfortunately, it turned confrontational quite quickly. I mean, we were just there for a very peaceful tabling simply to raise awareness, but that's not what the other side was there for. Can you explain a little bit the development of how it get as much physical that the police needed to intervene? So it pretty quickly became quite confrontational. Um, as I said, we were really there just, you know, not provoking at all. We didn't, we did not come prepared for any sort of rally or anything. We were there for a spreading awareness of this issue. Um, and a larger crowd began to gather, it grew and it grew pretty quickly. Um, and they started chanting and essentially forming a side. So it became like one side versus the other. And at certain points, especially near the end before it was dispersed, people started to grab flags and grab signs out of our group. And I, uh, I know in some cases people were punched or hit and so it became quite dangerous and violent. And how do you feel about the fact that this is happening in your university? So I'm not a student here. I work for Hillel Montreal. We're a, an organization that supports Jewish students around Montreal. So I happened to be there you know, well, to see what was happening. Um, and it's very, very frightening. I think we need to see a very clear condemnation. It needs to be made clear by the university administration. This is not okay, this cannot happen. We will not let our students or external people coming into the campuses harm Concordia students, or if it's at McGill, McGill students at any university, this cannot stand. Mm -hmm. So we saw the video circulating on social media of an interaction that happened here at the Concordia University. You were there. Can you explain to us a little bit what happened? Yeah, so uh, today we had like an event to sell those kufayas to people who wanted to support Palestine. And um, after that, after selling them, we were starting chanting like free, free Palestine and like, like slogans to like free Palestine from the genocide happening there. And um, next to us, there was a stand, another stand with like pro-Israelis. And I just saw like they had flags. I don't know if they were also selling something. And after that, like, we kept chanting, like, Free Free Palestine, and, like, a lot of people were chanting with us, just for support for the country. And then um, some, like, pro-Israelis came also to chant, like, that they want peace or things like that. And after that, after, like, chanting, then, like, people started to be a bit, like, more aggressive because of everything that is happening. So like families are being directly affected. So of course it's a really like sensitive subject. And uh, because of that, like people were starting to be more aggressive. And at the end of all the protests, well, people like started to be more physical and the police came. And for me, it looked like they were descending a lot the Israeli side because they were blocking like that, like for, us to no, not go like against them or something like that, but they were not doing the, the other way around. So I thought it was just like a bit sad to be honest, but yeah, in the end, like the police came and everybody like just went away. We saw in one of the video that some people from the pro-Palestine tried to rip off the Israeli mm -hmm. flag. Uh, do you think that it's it's was it necessary to do that? 
Um, I can't talk about that because I didn't mm -hmm. see it. I didn't see any pro-Palestinian, like in the pro-Palestinian um, protests, like do, like remove the Israeli flag. So I can't, mm -hmm. I don't know. I was like, I didn't see it happening. So it's been three days in the world that we see anti-Semitic uh, act as like the m m Molotov cocktail at one synagogue. We saw also what happened like yesterday here, and today two yeshiva was victim of bullet in the front door. Um, how do you feel about the rise of anti-Semitic uh, action that takes place all over Montreal? It's extremely scary. I mean, first of all, it shows you know, there's a massive rise in anti-Semitism going on. Anti-Semitism was not by any means a new problem. It was very much a very serious problem before October 7th, but in the past month it has grown exponentially worse, which is crazy. The Jewish state suffered an attack, a terrible, terrible terrorist attack, the worst in its history, and yet the response that we see is more anti-Semitism, worse anti-Semitism. And so it's a very frightening time to be a Jew. I will say, I think that we shouldn't let this get to us. It's important to be strong and to be proud of who we are and to remember, you know, we, we can't let this get to us, but it's nonetheless, it's very scary. Mm -hmm. But we need to understand the source of the problem, which is the colonization and the killing of thousands of innocent Palestinians. And because of that... But what what, do you thought, what is your thought about them? Like, do you think that they are a terrorist organization or you think that is resistant? What, what is it that? Well, I think it's very unfortunate that we always label, we often label Arabs like terrorists, but we don't call like the Israeli, um, the Isra like Netanyahu, we, call, we, we don't call, it, call him a terrorist or Joe Biden, which sends 40 billion of dollars and even more to Israel to kill innocent people. Why don't we call him a terrorist? Why is it always labeled only for Arab people? That's what I think is unjust. Just the question by itself, it's biased because why right now we are living a genocide, but why are we not calling Netanyahu a terrorist? Why Hamas? is the terrorists. Mm -hmm. That's what I don't understand. So you consider that they are not a terrorist, but Biden is as much a terrorist that Hamas? Um, I think that Biden is, because Biden is spending that much of money to kill innocent people, I think he is, he is the main reason why all of this is happening. If Biden was not giving billions and billions of dollars and like military use and weapons to Israel, Israel would have not killed that many people of like one month. More than 10,000 innocent Palestinian dead killed by the Israeli forces in one month. That never happened before. This is the second Nakba and this is um, mainly because of Joe Biden, because of the United States, because without that, that, this money, they will not be able to do anything, mm -hmm. or like less lower than this. Do yeah. you support Abbas? Um, again, I think that this question is biased, because why not asking if I support, like... But it, it's the person who, who are mm -hmm. leading your country, Palestine. I think, yeah, I think that they are trying to defend their 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 people and their country from the occupation, which is Israel. But again, do, like you, do, you, do you support the people who lead the Palestine? Um, I think that Palestine has the right to resist and has the right to defend itself against the colonizer, which is Israel, because, um, like for Ukraine, for instance, they have the right to res they have the right to resist themselves. And when they did resist themselves against Russia, everybody was on their side. So that's why I think it's really biased to think like that. Because why, if I if I think about the the fighters in Ukraine, then they are not. They are not terrorists. They are just freedom fighters and they are good and they are defending their lands. But when we look at Palestine, then we have that label of oh, they are terrorists. They are not freedom fighters anymore. And that's what I don't like. <laughs> Go 
over the truth about the war.com if you want to not only encourage our journalism by donating generously but also you can watch our report about the conflicts between Hamas and Israel.